Hello and welcome to the Fairfield Dynasty. Today we embark on a brand new journey that will be taking place in Fairfield, Connecticut. This is a brand new team making the transition to the highest level of college football. It will be a tough journey starting from the very bottom and working our way to try and make this one of the elite programs in the country. The Northeast is not really known as a true hotbed of talent. You do have players up there who are definitely good players, but it is not the Southeast by any means or even the West Coast. You're going to not have states to recruit from like Florida, Texas, California. You're going to have to try and find those gems in lesser populated states. The Vermonts, the Connecticut doesn't have a whole ton of talent and that'll make this series very interesting as we will have to find those gym players and definitely fit our scheme around the players that we're able to find. So the rules for this dynasty will be going to be playing on Heisman difficulty. These is going to be a tough slider set to make it as realistic as I can. My goal with this series is to make this a realistic build. It's not going to be a five year thing. It might not even be a 10 year thing to really get us to that top level of college football. It's going to take a long time starting from the very bottom and as one of the, probably the worst program right now in the FBS, we're going to have to build our way up. That's going to come down to the way we recruit. We're going to not exploit the system. You can very quickly get four and five star guys to come to your school. We're going to stay away from that and really target lower rated prospects, especially to begin the series. And then as we improve as a team, we'll go up in the players that we do target to begin the series for the first season we'll be starting out as an independent and then in year two and beyond well, at least for year two we I believe we'll be moving to the Mac I think that's the plan right now we'll be in the East Division we could also join the American but that's a little too tough of competition but this program will be led by one of the bright offensive minds in all of football Darius Douglas he's been an NFL assistant for a number of years now He's only 37. He's known for his work with quarterbacks. He's worked with them most of his career, and he's going to need all his expertise, especially early on with the lack of talent on this roster. Right now, we're targeting five wins per year, which will be tough to get, especially early on with not a lot of talent on this team. Moving forward, though, that's definitely a reachable goal. We're going to be starting off as level three, but with a slow progression to keep the coach from getting too high in levels. Now that we met the head coaches, time to meet the coordinators. The offense coordinator is Dan Orlovsky, the longtime NFL quarterback. He helped UConn make their transition to FBS, and you're returning to Connecticut to help this upstart program. Dwight Freeney, the longtime pass rusher and one of the most dominant pass rushers of all time, will be the defensive coordinator. He's from close to Fairfield, so he will be turning home to jumpstart this defense and impart knowledge on this raw defensive line. Now that we've met the coaching staff, it's time to meet some of the players. We'll start off with the leader of this offense and the leader of this team. That is our number one running back, Dominique Frederick. He's not the most athletic guy, but he's a great one cut runner. And for a team of this caliber, he's definitely a great starting point and a great offensive weapon. He is not going to make you miss out of a lot of running backs. He's not the most elusive. He won't necessarily run over you, but he is very quick and has great ball carrier vision, which is definitely a good starting point. He's, like I said, a one-cut runner and should fit well in our offensive scheme. Now, moving to the defensive side of the ball, we have the starting free safety, Rashawn Gilchrist the third. He is good in the box and can play as a deep safety. He's a good enough athlete to cover the field while also being able to come down in the box and lay hits. One thing that is definitely important to mention though is his size. He's only 5'9 and 189 pounds, so he's definitely undersized, but I believe that he can make plays in both the run and the passing game and should be a great piece to start off with with our defense. And moving forward, we'll have him for two years as he is a junior. Next up is quarterback Spencer Clay. He is a pretty much prototypical pocket passer. He will not add anything in the run game. He has a decent enough arm, decent enough in accuracy, almost has prototypical size. He's 6'2", not the biggest guy though at only 200 pounds. Like I said though, he has a decent enough arm and pretty good accuracy, the best of both on this team. However, compared to other quarterbacks, he does he's definitely lacking in those areas. The other quarterback to keep an eye on is Terrence Lake. He adds more in the running game, but as a passer is much more raw and does not have the arm of Spencer Clay. 
it should be an interesting battle to see out of these two quarterbacks who will get the opening nod we'll see in the spring game which will be the next episode we'll see if we can get a better idea of which of the two is the better quarterback like i said though he adds more in the run game he's not an elite athlete by any means but compared to spencer clay he is a much better runner but does lack in some of the passing areas especially arm strength we'll head back to the defensive side of the ball now as so we have the rangy linebacker demar cartwright he has pretty good speed he is like i said a good athlete can stop the run and is also is good in coverage similar to rashawn gilchrist he has good size 6'2 212 so a little undersized in terms of weight but his height is very good he has a little bit of ability to rush the passer and does possess good coverage rating while only being a sophomore for the final player we're going to look at we'll stick with the defense and it is our number one corner trevon bullock in terms of speed and size for the most part he is up top in both of those categories he's good in both man and zone and can press a little bit and you can see there he also does lay the wood overall he's the most well-rounded corner we have he is a junior 5'11 194 and we should see some good play out of him he also has the ability to take the ball away in terms of interceptions which is always great to see now that you've met a few of the impact players on each side of the ball we get a full look at the roster this is a roster that does not have a lot of size speed strength or even skill for the most part you definitely have players who are talented and can make a difference but you don't have any sort of elite players and that's something that we're going to have to really work hard and it's going to take a lot of time to get there the other quarterback to mention is monte purcell he's got the best athleticism out of all the quarterbacks but as a passer is very raw and does not have a big time arm the one word i will use to describe the offensive scheme for this upcoming year it's going to be a spread system it is we're going to try and exploit matchups that way we're probably going to rely more on the run game we've got a nice stable of running backs now the type of plays we'll actually be running will largely depend on who is at quarterback if spencer clay is playing well you see more of passing maybe try and stretch the field vertically and if you have terrence lake who's in you'll see more of the option in the run game more short passes as he doesn't have that ability to really stretch the ball downfield now at the moment we don't have a lot of speed on the offensive side of the ball what we do have though is guys who can make you miss so it's going to be about getting those playmakers the ball in space and seeing what they can do after the catch without elite speed i don't necessarily see them breaking big plays for touchdowns but i can see them picking up chunk plays of around 20 yards by making one or two guys miss and then just on screen passes or short passes the ability to do things like that so in the receiving court though we have tj cross he is our number one receiver he is one of the better athletes we have right now he is one of those guys like i said a playmaker only 5 10 but is very quick does not have the elite speed to various edwards is more of a possession receiver he's got the best hands over the receiving core but does have i believe the second worst speed that's the thing to keep in mind a lot of these players have a singular skill that they're good at antonio lawson is another guy similar to tj cross he is the ability in open field to make you miss but does not necessarily have the most sure-handed hands or really that deep field speed when it comes to the tempo that our offense will be using it's definitely gonna be a quicker tempo we're gonna go no huddle we're not gonna huddle at all now the one thing to keep in mind though is we will mix and match it to keep the defense on their heels and depending on how our defense is playing you'll definitely see us try and cover for them as our offense should be the strength of this team there may be more talent on the defensive side of the ball but it's easier to uh with our scheme exploit mismatches and really attack a defense than it is for our defense to stop explosive offenses now in terms of recruiting we're definitely going to uh it's going to be a tough build we're not going to be targeting players really out of our general region to begin with we're going to really target that upper northeast try and find any sort of talent we can in states like vermont new hampshire maine dip into pennsylvania which definitely has probably the most potential out of any state close to us new jersey has some nice talent connecticut will have a few players every year that can maybe make an impact but that's about it so it's definitely going to be hard to find these players and i really am not going to expand outside of that zone so if we can't find a good player there then we're pretty much out of luck and we're going to have to try and just find anyone we can to fill a hole on the roster it's going to make it a lot tougher to build this team and i'm very excited for that part it's definitely going to be a much tougher build than Mount Pleasant was as Mount Pleasant was in a very easy area to find any sort of recruit that you want. You had a ton of speed, a ton of talent, 
in the Southeast. Also, in terms of caliber of player, we're gonna really limit ourselves as you may see a couple or a few three stars in our class, but really to start out, it's gonna be two stars, one stars, really trying to find those gems and the overlook guys who will realistically come to a school of this caliber and a school that is just starting out. You're not gonna be going out there and signing high three stars or even four stars. That's just not realistic for a program at our point right now. Now on the defensive side of the ball, we'll be playing a, uh, I guess a multiple defense. It's gonna be basically a 3-4, three, 4-3 four, four, three hybrid. You're gonna have uh, four down linemen with uh, one standing linebacker who will blitz. We're gonna try and exploit matchups that way. We aren't able to go out and get your 300 pound guys who can, who are elite in the middle and the like elite pass rushers. We're gonna have to find the guys who are undersized, who can rush the passer and try and get after it that way. In the secondary, we're gonna be looking for guys who uh, eventually have good speed, can keep up, and can make impact plays in terms of forcing fumbles and also taking the ball away through interceptions. It's going to be important that we get those playmakers to really help this offense, especially early on with so much inexperience at the quarterback position. We're going to need good field position, and hopefully the players on this roster right now can provide that. If not, we'll have to go out and find players like that who can make that impact for us. Also, when it comes to defense, like I said earlier, you're not going to find the Alabama style players who check every box that you want. You're going to have to maybe go out if you want a speedy linebacker. He's not going to be able to really play in the box. He's only going to be a coverage guy. If you want a guy who can play in the box, he most likely won't have that speed that you would want out of him. And he probably won't be able to cover very well. So it's going to be about mixing and matching roles to try and get the best result. And early on, it's going to probably be about bending and not breaking and trying to force turnovers in key spots and just getting a few stops and hoping our offense can outscore other teams in that way after a couple of stops. It's going to be a tough grind early on with this lack of talent compared to uh, even some of the bottom teams in the FBS. We still don't have talent comparable to them. So it'll be tough, especially in year one. Then we'll be able to get some players in. We'll see some improvement, not a ton of seniors on this team. So we won't have a ton of turnover, especially not in a ton of key positions. But the next episode will be the spring game. It'll be a scrimmage. We'll split up the roster evenly and get a look at the whole team in action. We'll see the first game action. It won't be live. It won't be against a true opponent for anything that counts. But it will be our first chance to really see how this team plays and how all the players how what is their style like who are they and really get to know them better but i hope you did enjoy this episode if you did please leave a like down below leave your comments of what you've seen so far which players are you most excited to see in the spring game which do you think could have the biggest impact early on who's maybe one of the players that is not necessarily a starter right now but that you could see having a big impact in the future but just leave any of your thoughts down in the comments i'm excited to read how you guys feel about this series the next episode will be that spring game like i said it should be a fun episode, but I will see you guys next time, because I'm out.